we are going to go through probably over possibly over the next couple months or so but uh for today uh we're going to be talking about good to great this is a fantastic book that i would highly recommend that we're going to be actually reading <clears throat> from jim collins uh, as we're moving towards a great company and so i'm going to walk us through a concept today but before i do I'm going to give you an overview of how they break the book down uh, as they did a tremendous amount of research on all these companies that were distinguished between good companies versus great companies. What were the objective, tangible, measurable things that they identified on each one of them, uh, the characteristics that they had. And this is a model that was laid out uh, of the elements of the, the book. So I'll try to just give you a quick synopsis that when you look at the people that worked for great companies, uh, the sort of executive team, it was disciplined people that had disciplined thought that took disciplined action. So we went through this framework by which you have these disciplined people that had disciplined thought, had disciplined action. The layer on top of that was under the disciplined people, it starts first with what he calls level five leadership and also first picking the who, then the what. Uh, and we'll unpack that as we go through the process. Um, the discipline thought section talks about, you know, that these companies would confront the brutal facts. So they would face reality as fast as they could uh, and continue to face reality uh, and gather information and data. And then they also had discipline thought about what they call the hedgehog concept, which we'll be spending some time on. And the hedgehog concept is this idea of which everything else is centered around. It's the one major thing of a profit per X that they focused on within their firm that they were gonna do better than anybody else, that they were extremely passionate about and that could also be extremely profitable. It's kind of a three-part thing that they would go through. So we're gonna talk about that as well. Uh, when you go into the discipline action section, then you start to understand a culture that was developed of discipline, not just an individual, but a culture that was uh, put together of discipline. And then you had a technology accelerator. And, you know, when you talk about technology, they have a whole different perspective on technology that they walk through where most people just start diving immediately into technology where they just looked at it as something that was a tool that was used to accelerate the hedgehog concept that they had. And so uh, this is the framework. And then you'll see this kind of flywheel uh, that they discuss as well, where as they're going through level five leadership and putting the right who's in the right seats uh, and then confronting brutal facts, then there's this buildup as they identify a hedgehog concept. And then over time, as you keep pushing the will over and over and over, kind of the law of Mo, of just doing the same thing over and over again, once you identify the hedgehog concept and keep refining, 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 and iterating, that eventually over time, then you have a breakthrough. So as you kind of walk through each one of these steps, that eventually breaks through. And so that's just kind of an overview that will be going to each one of these concepts. I know you probably have lots of questions that you have, but not to worry because uh, this is something that we're going into. So today we're gonna to talk about what's called level five leadership. And there's all these different levels and uh, from good to great, but we're gonna be talking about level five leadership, which is the first pod under disciplined people. The level one, leader is what they call highly capable individuals. So this is somebody who comes to the team, contributes using their skills. So there is a skill that they bring to the company. 
uh, that they're able to utilize, you know, could be sales, could be tech, um, could be anything. Uh, they also have a know-how. Okay, so there's some, some knowledge base that they're able to bring uh, to the firm, to the team. And then they also have good work habits. So these are, you know, discipline habits that are consistent, that they're doing day in and day out that they contribute to the team. So that's like level one, baseline, contributions, knowledge, and then good work habits. So level two is they call it a contributing team member. And this person uses their skills and knowledge to help their team succeed. So now you have your individual, they're doing some contribution to this bigger thing of the team. When you move to a level two, you're now contributing using your skills and knowledge to help the team succeed to where they need to go. And then when you get to a level three, now you're moving into more of that, what they call a competent manager. So this is someone who's now capable of or not only just you know, doing the things that need to be done, bringing skills, being able to execute, following through with those things consistently, but you're also capable of organizing the team to efficiently reach predetermined goals. So this is somebody who can take the team, organize them together to efficiently reach these predetermined objectives, okay? And then a level four leader is an effective leader. So this is someone who can create the commitment from their team to vigorously pursue a clear and compelling vision, okay? So they're able to create a high performing team. And uh, so this is somebody that again, could put a vision together, move it towards where it needs to go, clear and compelling, and then start building an actual high performing team. So this person has the capacity and capability to bring the team together, find the team, collaborate them, and then start moving towards the actual vision that they want to. And then finally, level five, and this is where they really spend most of the time within the book, is a level five leader has all those other skills, plus there's a unique combination of what they call will. So this is a, they have a personal will and humility. So a lot of the companies that were good companies, they noticed that the leaders were certainly had good will. They just didn't have humility. They always wanted to be in the limelight. They always wanted to be uh, in every kind of article. They wanted to be out at the front. Uh, they wanted to kind of self-promote. Um, you know, they were they were very much trying to do everything they could to make themselves look really good at the end of the day and and sort of a lot of self-promotion. Uh, and so they'll, they kind of unpack the distinction between somebody that's just sort of, you know, probably a little more low key, um, but they really are just extremely determined and dedicated to do whatever they need to for the, for the firm. So it's paradoxical because uh, this person is extremely ambitious but they're not just ambitious for their own self, they're ambitious for the organization. So they're really ambitious for the organization to excel rather than just themselves, right? They're saying, look, I wanna see this company succeed. I wanna see the team succeed. I wanna see all this stuff go where it needs to go. But they were modest about what they personally contributed and they were so, almost self-effacing. Uh, <clears throat> so it was kind of something they didn't anticipate to find out when they studied all these companies, but this was the common, consistent, thematic thing on all the firms they saw and the people that were in leadership and the level five leadership was that they were very, very modest about what they were personally contributing and self-effacing, uh, which was sort of paradoxical because they're extremely ambitious. So very hardworking people. Uh, they were extremely driven, almost fanatically. Uh, driven to produce results on a sustainable basis, um, you know, over a long period of time, just doing the things that need to be done. And this isn't the result of one off heroic effort. They recognize it as day in, day out, day in, day out, disciplines, work, 
everything that it took for them to get where they need to go. So they're extremely driven uh, individuals. Uh, they were um, successor builders. So they spent quite a bit of time building people to be more successful than they are. Uh, they wanted them to do better than themselves. They were very focused on how do I keep building that next level and people to have success? That, that's what their focus was, was kind of how do I help people be more successful than I am going to be? So this was another trait that they identified uh, as they went through their study. Uh, these people continued to share praise. So they were praising other people uh, for all that was being done as opposed to just self-praising. And so they were always sharing the praise with other people. And then ultimately, they were the ones that would take the blame. So when everything went south, they actually would take the blame personally for why things were not going the way it was supposed to go. And so this was the consistent thematic thing that they saw in what they call the level five leader. Um, these were normal people. Uh, these were not uh, just super hero people. They were a lot of times farmers. They were no names that nobody really had heard about before. Uh, they were just average people that you would have seen. I mean, the Hewlett Packard, uh, who ended up, you know, is now dead, but Ultimately, you know, his funeral, it was just, they just had a picture of him. He was, you know, a farmer type of guy and just kind of saw himself as hanging out with his friends and doing things. So he just, they just saw themselves as normal people, not larger than life, um, which was, you know, as you kind of went through it, you're like, oh my gosh, like, that's really fascinating that it's completely paradoxical because you would have thought, oh my gosh, they must just be larger than life personalities and over the top and, you know, that's, that's what gets most of the attention from the media, but it was completely the opposite. Uh, they did not walk the limelight and uh, they were just your sort of average everyday um, people. So, you know, this is how it started was literally a level five leader uh, that was kind of homegrown within the company uh, over time that kind of worked their way to a level five uh, leadership um, Trait. So uh, what I wanted to do was to hear from you guys. What do you think? A couple of questions, maybe to, to have us uh, walk through. What, what makes someone a good contributing member of a, to a team? Uh, number two, what do you think, what do you look for in a competent manager? And then number three is, what did you think about the traits of the level five leadership? Was there anything that surprised you or... I'd love to hear from uh, each one of you guys.